Anyway, it is a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Uh, maybe Kush already told you who I am. If not, I'll introduce myself really quickly. My name is Andy. I used to be at the Penn Band, by far the best band uh, that there is at any university. And I used to play in the low brass. Anybody in the low brass in here? Uh, like trombones or trumpets? Oh, there we go. Yes, I, I was getting concerned. Uh, and, yeah, and I played an instrument that's called the euphonium, uh, which you eu means a nice and phonium sound. So it is a, it translates into a nice sound. It doesn't necessarily have a nice sound, uh, at least the way I play it. Uh, but but, it, but in, in reality, that, that's what the instrument means. Um, and today, we got an interesting challenge because I'm going to try to see how we can combine engineering and music at the same time. So I'm not sure how old any uh, you guys are, but is anybody planning perhaps on studying engineering, maybe during college? Any show up of hands? Perfectly. Well, that, that's more than I expected. I, I was a mechanical engineer myself, um, and I hope many of you might become one uh, after today. But the reality is, believe it or not, we, we can use a lot of engineering in, in music and actually in designing instruments. So let me go ahead and share my screen right away. Uh, can you guys see my screen yeah. in here? But, so what do you guys see? Oh, it is a trumpet. Well, I, I'm glad you guys recognize it, the trumpet. So this is a trumpet that I had designed uh, a couple of weeks back. Well, uh, sometimes I'm bored and I like designing things for fun. Um, and it's essentially using a software that is a design software called SolidWorks. Um, you get something, I think it's pretty cool looking. It looks pretty realistic, like a, like an actual trumpet, right? And this is not quite what you learn in engineering school, but you learn how to take something from real life, an object, and make it a reality. If not, improve it. Design it, prototype, build something. And so I thought when, when Kush suggested uh, to make today's uh, session, to maybe try and design a musical instrument, all of us together. Uh, so hopefully my goal for today will be uh, to show you a little bit how to do some designing. Um, and I'll also, uh, since we are here right now, uh, well, I'll show you my other screen in a moment. I have a YouTube channel that I'll paste. Uh, let's see if I can find... Well, I, I'll wait until the end of the meeting to paste it. If not, I'll, I'll send it to Kush afterwards, uh, where I, I go over many of these design things. Or uh, Kush can also share my my contact if you guys want to chat about this uh, more later. Uh, so I thought, all right, in maybe an hour, what is the easiest instrument uh, that I could design? So I thought about designing a flute. So let me bring exactly... What, I, what I'm talking about just in here. Uh, so can you guys see Google in here right now? Yes. Yes, perfectly. So I, just, I literally went into Google and I started looking for plastic flutes, something that looks like, well, this one is actually wooden, but I wanted to look at a side view, more particularly something like this. Uh, have you guys ever played this instrument before? Yes. Yes, yes I, I remember when I was younger, uh, they taught me this. This is the, as as I'm not a flute player. I I do envy those who play flute. But it's a very hard instrument to play, um, but it's actually an easy instrument to design, and we'll see why in just a moment. So what I've done already, I got myself a little bit ahead of the game, and I downloaded this picture, and I'm gonna use this picture to do a little bit of uh, of the design work. Uh, and this is my YouTube channel. I'll I'll show you guys in a moment. So just looking at this picture and. I also went to Amazon and I found that apparently these flutes are about like 11 inches long. So that's as much information that I think we'll be needing right now uh, to accomplish this challenge. So I'm going to minimize my screen and I go back to this design software and I'm going to go here to file new and I'll create a new part. And I'm going to, before getting started myself, I'm going to try and give you an overview of the basics of how to design uh, some some stuff. I maybe this might be a little bit complicated, uh, it, but but hopefully you'll be able to follow. If not, uh, with my YouTube channel, you'll be able to play around afterwards. But it's essentially I'm gonna create a part. This is what this software will allow us to do. And the very first thing is, I can let's start by exploring a little bit some of the commands that this software allows us to do. So I go here to where it says sketch. I'm gonna start sketching something. 
and it allows us to select different planes. So I'm going to select, for instance, the, the top plane. And say I want to design, uh, is anybody's birthday by any chance this month? Nobody, nobody has a birthday on July. All right, let's suppose uh, America, America's birthday is in July. So let's let's make a cake. So let's actually design a cake. The way I want to design a cake is, you know, with different layers. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select a circle and I'm going to go here to that point in there and I will make a circle like that. And as you can see, the units that I'm using are in inches. So that's what I'm going to base myself off. So we're going to make the base of this cake maybe 10 inches in diameter, and I do that. And then if I go here to where it says features, I can give this circle volume. So that's called extrude. So I can click in here and say, I want this cake to have a height of two. So now we've done like, like a little disc. So now let's make yet one other layer of the cake. So I'm gonna click here in sketch, again in sketch, and it's gonna prompt us to select yet another surface. So the surface in which I want to do a sketch is now the top plane of, of this cylinder. And what I'll do is I'm going to select another circle in here, and I'm going to draw, draw it like that. I'll go here to the dimension tool, and I'll make this maybe eight inches in diameter. And now let's make again, let's give this volume, and I'm going to give it also, let's say, three inches this time. So we're starting to build layer by layer of this cake. And let's do perhaps one more layer in here. And I'll do yet one other circle. And this time I'll make it five. And I want the height actually to be one inch. And just because I think it would be like pretty cool, I'm going to make another sketch in here. And I'll make yet one other circle. This time maybe I'll make it slightly smaller at uh, two inches. But this time, instead of adding volume, I'm going to subtract volume. So the way you would do that is using this command that's called extrude cut. So this time, I'm going to subtract one inch. So you can see how we got something that maybe might look like a cake uh, or perhaps <laughs> not. And maybe that's more like a donut there. And now let's add a little bit of candles. So let's give it, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a little sketch on that surface in here. And then it, where it says, so I can draw stuff, I can make different designs. That's what we'll do in just a second. I can also do something that is a construction line, which is lines that just help us while we are building the particular sketch that we're interested in building. So I'll go in here and I'm gonna draw a line that goes all the way from the origin, which are those two red axes, up there like that. And I'm gonna give this perhaps a dimension of 1.5 inches. And then I'll make a circle like that. And let's say that that is going to be, um, actually, I don't think I'll do that. I'm going to change. I'm going to delete that. But I still want that line to be there. So I'm going to do something very interesting, which is the following one. I'm going to click here in Features, go to Reference Geometry, Plane, and then click on that point and click on the line. So now we created a plane that is perpendicular to that point and line. So I'm going to click right here, and I'm going to make the candles there. We'll, we're going to give them an interesting design. So I click there on the plane, and I'll make... So candles are easy to make because they're like a little bit axisymmetric in shape. So I'll make a candle that is about one inch tall. So say one inch, there we go. And I want the thickness of the candle to be maybe half an inch. So the way, so you'll see in a moment what I mean in a second. If I want the width of the candle to be half an inch, I'm gonna make this one quarter inch. You'll see why, in, I'll make that 0.25 like that. And then I'm gonna use a very, Interesting, well, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna attempt to do like the fire part of the candle. Let's see, 0.4, there we go. And then I'm gonna make this line in here, I'm gonna make it look nice and pretty. 
that. I'm also going to make one inch two. And then I'm going to grab this tool in here that's called the spline tool. And it allows us to make different shapes. So what I'll do in here is, uh, I'm not sure it's going to look too much like a candle, but, but we'll, give it a, we'll give it a shot. Um, I, it, I'm, I'm doing my best in there. But what we can do is, now we can go here to features, and we're going to try something new, which is the revolve tool. So if I click on the revolve tool, I can select an axis, and it's going to go around like that. And now we have something that may, not, may or may not look like a candle, but, but it's fine. And then but that is one, say I want actually uh, five of these, because you know, it's like the fifth birthday of this person. So what I'll do is I'll go to where to this command here, linear pattern, and I click on circular pattern. And then for direction, I can choose I want to be around that. No, I don't want that face. I want to be this circle. And then for features, I want this candle to be the pattern. I want to select equal spacing, and I want five of these. There we go. And I'm going to hide that in there. So you know, it's looking all right, but it's just to demonstrate the commands that we're doing here. Uh, so now to give it a little bit more flavor, I can right click on each one of these layers and go to this button in there, and we can give them colors. So I'll click on where it says boss, and I can say, all right, I'm going to make this orange. OK. Then I'll make I'll click on this one and click where it says boss. And I'll make this one pink. And I'll click in this one where it says boss. Oi. And I'll make this one blue. And then here in the inside, we can make that uh, like red. And then for the candles. For the cir I can choose a circular pattern, and I can make them green as well as that one there. So then we have got something that is um, just a quick demo of like some of the basic commands behind this software. Um, I know I went a little bit too fast, but I'm wondering whether anybody of you has any questions so far about what I've done. Well, it doesn't matter if you guys don't have it. But now I'm going to start repeating this whole process. But now it's going to what pertains to us, which is designing the flute. So we're going to go from, again, let me see if I can bring the picture again, from this to actually a physical model. So let's give it a shot. So the way I'm going to do that is, you know, I don't care about this part, but I'm going to go here to File, New. I'm going to create a part here. And hopefully this video will be made available to you guys, so you will be able to know how to design this by yourself if you wanted to try this by yourself, uh, following these sort of uh, steps. So just following more or less what I've done before, I'm going to click to where it says Sketch. I click here on Sketch, and I select again a plane. And now one very cool thing about this software is that it allows us to bring pictures into it. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go to where it says Tools, Sketch Tools, and then I go to sketch picture. There we go. And I have a flute that is a picture I downloaded previously. I'll open it. There we go. So now you, you'll see why it's important to bring the picture in here. And you can see it says it's as tall as 34 inches, that picture, which is completely wrong. So I'm going to make it as tall as 12. That way, more or less, the distance from this point in here to that point in there is going to be maybe 11 inches, more or less. Um, so let's let's give it a shot. So now to start designing this flute, the strategy that we're going to look is and what I like about this instrument that is that it's it's almost like making the candle that we made before. In the sense that it has an axis of symmetry because it's uh, th there's a tool in the machine shop that it's called the lathe. The lathe is, I can put like an object and it starts spinning. So every time I do something, it's gonna, it's like making a revolve. So the, we're gonna do the exact same thing in here. I'm just gonna draw half of that flute uh, and that should be enough to make it look close to that. So then 
the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select roughly that point there. And I'm going to draw a line that goes all the way to the top like that. And I'm going to add just a couple of center lines in here. So I'll go all the way like this, all the way like that. Maybe I'm going to give it to, I like giving some rough dimensions in here. There we go, perfect. So now what I'll do is now using that command, I'm going to start tracing all of the outline of the flute using that uh, this tool in here that's called the spline. So the first thing I'll do is I'll draw a line that goes just like that. So 0.45, then I'm going to give, I like defining things that way you know, whenever I draw something, it doesn't move uh, from one place to another. And then yes, I'm going to use this beautiful command here, spline, and let's start drawing all of this flute. So I'm, I'm going to use the straight line like this. Um, so I'm going to draw like that. So I'm just using the straight line, and I'm using this command, the spline, which gives you like this free form, as if you were drawing with a pencil. And I'm going to continue drawing like that perfectly. And then I want to draw a line. So it's possible that it's not going to look exactly like the actual flute, but it's going to be our, the pen band summer camp uh, flute, which is a, our, our own version of it. So we'll just draw over here. You see the picture gets very pixelated when we zoom in. That's a, that's one of the downsides of this software. But we, we, I think it's still reasonably good. So I'm going to give it all the way to the top like that. And then I'm going to start giving it some shape like this. There we go. Obviously, the more time that you spend doing this, the the better the quality of of your final thing. But today I want to reach a balance between re doing it reasonably quick and showing just the various functionalities. I'm going to go up like that. Uh, nice. There we go. Um, I bring it all the way like, oh, I'm going to control Z. I bring it all, oh, why is it? There. There we go. I'm just going to. Hopefully, I'll be done in just a second tracing the outline. We want to make it look pretty in here. Just like that. Then there we go. All right. I think that reasonably looks like the like a half of a flute. So let's make the magic happen. And the way we're going to make that is by going again to features. And let's make a revolve. So I'm going to click in that line in there. And voila. Not bad, right? Uh, overall. So that's why I think we've got now the basic features of, of the flute in here. But like we're still not done because this flute, as you can see it right now, it is purely, it is solid. So now we need to make the flute be hollow on the inside, right? Because otherwise I'm not able to blow sound in there. So one way that one can do that is by going here to where it says features, and there's a command that is called shell. So shell, what it does is that it's gonna create a thin layer all around that flute. So if I click in here, 
and I'll say, let me do a shell preview. That way we see how would that look like. I'm gonna give it a uniform layer of 0.1 inches all throughout the thickness or, or well, all throughout the length of this flute. As I click OK, uh, oh, minimum radius, of course. Why? Well, I think it worked, mostly. Maybe I'm gonna edit this one second. I'll see what happens if I reduce it. Would that work? Um, well, it seems that some of some of the radii that I did in there might might complicate sometimes the math of how this software is working on the back hand. Uh, but I think that's reasonably nice for now. I, I, I'm not going to complicate uh, myself in here. Um, so that kind of looks like the flute that we wanted to make. Um, it has an interesting shape, uh, but that is fine. So now let's pull up Google again. So we need to start adding, if you look at the original picture, we need to add all of these different holes that go all throughout the the thickness of this, so that that is what we'll do in just a second. Then we need to add that feature in there. We'll do that also in just a second. And then if we look at the side view, we need to make this cut in here. So I think actually we might start with, with the cut in there. So one way that we can do that is by default, we have three planes that we can work on right now. So I'm going to choose this plane in here. It's called the right plane because it's parallel to the overall length of our instrument. So I'll click sketch in here. And now what I want to do is I'm going to use a command, which is super interesting. Uh, maybe you learn it when you take, uh, I think, algebra in math, which is when you're doing a projection from one plane into another one. Uh, it, it, there, there's like all sorts of math. I, I, that's why I like this software a lot. So now what I want to do is I want to project these faces into that plane. And one way that we can do that is by using this command that's called convert entities. So I want to project these lines uh, just like that. So now you see that I'm on a plane and I have, it's as if I'm bringing these lines over to me. And the reason why I was interested in doing that is because if we go back uh, to Google, I want to make a cut that goes more or less like that. Uh, so I think I'm going to also project, let me also project, um, uh, let's see if I have that one in there. I have a, another way of doing it. And I make a center line like this. And I give it some quick dimensions in here. Then all of these lines, uh, I still leave them, but I want to mirror this line and this line through here. That way I also have them down there. Oh, I'm going to complain. That's fine. Um, let's see if I can mirror that one only. There we go. Perfect. And now I'm going to use this tool, which allows me to do an arch. And essentially, I'm going to select like some point in there and some point like that. And I'll make something like this. So hopefully this is a little bit complicated, but it will make more sense uh, once I actually do it. I'm, I'm right clicking in here and converting all of these into construction lines. There we go. And then what I'll do is uh, so using that area that I see there, I'm going to make a cut that goes all across the length of the flute. So if I go back to features and to extrude cut, and I here put through all. Oh, they're trying to intersect the model. Very interesting. Um, I think I have a solution to that. Maybe that one works. You see, I'm, I'm, I'm going through many errors designing stuff in my life. So I know more or less some hacks to, like when every time the software returns me an error, how, how would you solve that? Um, so 
I wanna, oh, there we go. Let's see, would that work? There? Yeah, so maybe <laughs> I might delete this for now. So maybe I'm not super satisfied with how big that radius turned out. So one way we can solve that is if I go back to that sketch and I click in here and I can bring this point a little bit downwards like that. So if I click exit, you see now that it's a little bit bigger. So, so far, so good. How, are you guys following so far or this process? Is it too complicated? Um, hopefully, yes. If not, don't be shy. I, I, I promise I'll leave some time for questions uh, once I'm done. But now let's add the holes uh, to this thing. So I think it's looking reasonably okay, the, the flute so far. So now what I want to do is I'm going to look at the flute from the top, which is that top plane in here. And I'm going to do, again, one sketch in here. And um, I'm going to go here to, again, tools, sketch tools, sketch picture. And I, I'm going to bring this picture, the one that I was using at the very beginning, back again, because the picture helps us with the design. So I'm going to bring it. And I'm going to scale it back again to the height that we had it at. There you go. So now you see that the picture is it cuts, if I were to rotate this, the picture is like cutting in half the, the flute, which is, that is very good. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna right click in the flute. Uh, well, first I'm gonna exit the sketch and I wanna right click in the flute and I wanna, I'm gonna hide uh, this thing for now because otherwise I cannot see the picture. And what I want to start doing is, I go here to, to this sketch, I'll edit this sketch and I want to start tracing these little circles that you guys see uh, over here. So I'm gonna roughly make the circles, right? In the positions where they're meant to be. There we go. A little circle in here. Otherwise you're not able to play the flute if we don't have the, uh, the finger in points. I'm gonna click like that. I'm gonna click like that. I'm gonna click like this. And I think that's gonna be enough for now because what I wanna do is now I'm gonna exit this sketch for a moment. Now I'll cl right click again in here and you see the little eye. I'll make it show again. And then I can go back to the sketch in here and I'll say features and I'll go extrude and I want to extrude all the way to the top like that. So now you see how it has holes. But now I think it would be a proper time to make the, the flute hollow again. So we can try that in here by going back to shell. I'll click in here. Let's see the preview. Uh, and let's see how would that look. Uh, that's fine. Um, oh boy, that is. <laughs> but it's not exactly how I, how I was intending. Maybe I'm gonna delete this one second. I have an idea. I'm gonna go back in time, which you can do in here in the software. Now, yes, I'll make the I'll make the shell again. It's fine. And now, if I make those cuts again that weird stuff that we saw shouldn't be present. Yeah, so we have it more or less done in here. I may, we need to do a cut in there so that we can have, we can blow, but I'm gonna leave that for a little bit later. So it's kind of already looking like a flute. Uh, one thing that I might want to do right now is if I right click in here and I go to, again, that button to change the color. One other thing that I can do if I click on body is I can assign this thing an appearance. So I can go here to plastic and say, I want this to be like this. Oh, let's give it a nicer color. Let's make like a blue kind of flute. So now it's looking you know, reasonably okay. I'm gonna, before, before we do anything else, let me just save uh, this one second somewhere. I don't even know where, oh, there we go. Let me call this flute 
in here, very nice. Perfectly. So now we got perhaps, we are almost done, at least with the first part of today's video. I just wanna see whether we can make that cut that we see in there. That is gonna be interesting to do, but not impossible. And that cut happens like around there. So one, one way I'm thinking that we could do that is like this. I'm gonna try again to, so that cut is I think around here, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna go back to our side plane, the one that we have in here. I'm gonna click on sketch. So now we're gonna do a sketch that is on the side in here. Um, and I'm gonna try, actually, before we do that, I want to actually have a plane that traverses this in half. So I think I have an idea on how we can do that. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna do a line that goes from here all the way to there. There we go. When I click escape, and I'm gonna make a plane that is just like that. So now I created a plane that is, that, that is just on the middle of this piece. And you'll see why that is important in just a second, because I can now go here to sketch, do sketch in here, and I can again use my projecting command, and I can choose this line just like that. There we go. And now I'm going to try and make like a little triangle. Uh, something that looks vaguely like this. And I'm gonna give this some dimension in here, maybe 0.15, maybe here 0.5. There we go. So now we have a triangle there in the in the middle of this piece. And now we go to our uh, extrude uh, command in here. I can say I want 0 0.5 to be maybe a little bit more, 0.1, and then on the other direction, also 0.1. So it makes like a little hole in there. So not bad at all. I, I wasn't sure whether that was gonna work uh, or not. So one of the last things I'll do right now, let me just right click here, I'm gonna hide. I'm gonna hide that line as well, is I'm gonna click here on sketch, sketch. I'll do sketch in here. And there's a command that's called offset entities, which allows you to select a face and just, well, you see in a moment what this means. It grabs all of the lines and I say, I want to offset them by a certain amount. So if I click reverse, it's going to bring them to the inside. So I'll say 0.05, yeah, something like that. And now let me do a, a quick extrusion. So let's see how that looks like. There we go. So now the flute, uh, or maybe I'm going to make it a bigger extrusion, maybe 0 0.25. Oh, well, actually, there's sometimes a little bit of trial and error in here, maybe point, just 0 0.5, there we go. So now, yes, I think the flute is completely hollow in the inside, you can see it here. I got somewhere where I can blow, um, you know, that space where you can, the air would come out. I got the buttons. Uh, so I think we are pretty much done. What do you guys think? Is there anything else? that is missing on the flute or how I included. Well, actually, I don't think it's hollow in this side, is it? Do you guys know? There's a little, let's actually ask uh, Mr. Google in here. Uh, there's, uh, let's see, plastic flute uh, back side. Just to confirm, I, we can do it. Uh, it's not a, it's not a problem. Um, oh, there, there is a hole. That is true. Uh, that's right. So what I'm gonna do here is the following thing. I'm gonna here go here to sketch, sketch. I'm gonna select that surface in there, and I'll make a little line that goes. Well, actually, I can convert this line in here. Very nice. Then I'm gonna make a circle that goes like this. So I want this, you know, that I'm creating like a ring and I want that ring to be now full. So maybe 
I'll make this circle 0.35 or maybe 0.4 inches in here. And I'm going to make a quick extrusion to the back side. Uh, yeah, I think that should work. Um, let me just edit this one second. I'm going to merge. Um, I'm just going to change the color the way this is also blue. There we go. And now there's a pretty cool command that's called fillet that I can click in here and now click on this line and I can give it some radius. So now it's all round like that. Um, so there we go. I think we got in the in the span of time because I still want to show you something else before this. Uh, there we got a flute. Um, any questions about this so far? Good. If not, you can ask it afterwards. Um, but this is just to say that whenever, say, you play the saxophone or play. Oh, there, there's a question. Yes. Uh, my name is Robbie. Quick question. Uh, what yes. About software and how much does it cost? Uh, great question. It does cost money. However, if I'm not mistaken, there's a student license that will give it to you for free. Um, and if, if and if this one doesn't come for free, there's another one that is very similar that is definitely for free. Uh, and hopefully after today's meeting, I'll, I'll send Kush like a couple of links uh, for him to forward to all of you. Uh, that way you can download them in your computers. Uh, but this is definitely, when it's for educational purposes, uh, you can get it for free uh, at your computers. And it, since it's summertime, it's a, good, it's a good time to, you know, play around with this. Uh, it looks good on college applications if you say that you already know how to use software like this, especially if you want to become an engineer, right? And then you combine, and like, passions. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? No, of course. Any other uh, questions? Uh, well, so before I continue, because I still want to do something pretty cool with this, just one thing that breaks my mind is the fact that, say, you're playing the sax, or you're playing, if I bring it up again, something like uh, the trumpet that looks as complex like that. These trumpets, it's not that, I mean, obviously, they are drawn first like a sketch, but eventually, when you you are Yamaha, right, the, the music instrument maker, you need to have a a CAD, this is computer-aided model, a computer-aided design model in some computer to be able to fabricate all of these different pieces. So it's, I, I never quite thought about it while I'm playing my own instrument, the euphonium. Maybe Kush uh, can bring it forth to show how complicated it is, but there's a lot of mechanical design in things that in your daily lives that you don't realize exist. And, and I think what we're doing today is extremely powerful because we're designing something just from a picture. Uh, and you are empowered to do that. And I think that's some of the, like, one of the biggest beauties uh, behind all of this. But now the story doesn't end here because we got a flute design. But now what I want to try to do is take it a step farther and say, uh, can, can, you guys see, can you guys see my face by any chance? Uh, once again. So, so I have like a pen in here, right? Uh, suppose the pen was the flute. Um, and for some reason, you know, I wanted to know, uh, you know, like I'm doing like this, right? This movement that I'm doing like this, it's called bending. So I'm, I have the, I have the, the pen fixed on these two ends and I'm in a way applying a force in the middle. So this, this thing, this flute or pen is undergoing something that's called stress. Uh, and if you study mechanical engineering, uh, a lot of the things that you are trying to understand is when do certain things break? Say you're building a bridge. So you're building a, an engine, you're building a, a set of gears or a musical instrument, you want to understand how strong they are. Uh, so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go to the, I think, the more interesting part of the, today's presenta presentation, which is let's actually do a simulation using this software uh, to see whether we can do something. Better. So, so I'm going to go here to say SolidWorks add-ins, and I'm going to click to where it says SolidWorks simulation. So I'll click in there, in just one second, and you'll see. So what is a simulation? I, I can start by saying that. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm not sure whether Kush uh, told you about his 
job uh, like besides the music, but Kush is um, also a professor and he does many simulations too. The, but there's all sorts of simulations in all sorts of research domains. Uh, the simulation that we're, the word simulation is saying, I take something that is not real. Uh, in this case, it's a computer model. And we're trying to use uh, computational techniques to try to model reality. Uh, because sometimes you don't have the resources in real life to uh, conduct these tests. But you can use the power of computers to, to realize whether something works or not. So you see this tool simulation came through. So I'm going to click where it says study. And I'm going to run something that's called a static study. We're going to do something that's called a structural analysis on, on this part. Uh, and I'm going to click OK. And now we have a bunch of things that I'm going to explain through in here that will make sense as we go. So the first thing when I right click on the flute is that I want to apply, I want to dictate what material is made this of. Because you know, whether I make an instrument out of plastic, I, I, the, do you guys play, do, have you guys seen the plastic trombone by any chance? Uh, there's, they, are, they come in different colors. That one is not as strong as the metal trombone. So obviously, whether I make something of one material or another one will have an impact. So in this case, I'm going to assign a material here. So I'll go here to plastics and I'll say that this thing is made out of ABS, which is one variety of plastic that exists. And it has a that material, you, you'll soon discover, has a bunch of properties. Um, I won't go into them too much right now, but they're interesting to know. Some of them are the elastic modulus, which means how much literally can I stretch, how flexible this material it is. It's measured in a funky unit. It doesn't matter too much right now what the unit is. And now one is the Poisson ratio. Poisson in French means, uh, means uh, fish, but it has nothing to do with fish. Uh, and here Poisson ratio means whenever I'm, if you grab like a piece of foam, you know, whenever I'm, uh, I have a foam and I compress it in one direction, it starts expanding on another one. So this ratio, the Poisson ratio, is measuring exactly that. How much, if I compress one direction, how much it expands on the other one. Very, very fascinating stuff. And then just a bunch of other things that I don't care about now, but I click apply. Uh, now it changed colors, which doesn't matter, but that's okay. So now this thing is made out of uh, this particular brand of plastic. Then here, where it says fixtures, I want to establish something that is the boundary conditions. So if you guys remember the analogy of the pen, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to say that this end of the pen of the flute is going to be fixed. While this end in here, this is where I'm going to be applying a force. So it's going to, so we're going to have something that's known as a cantilever uh, to see like how much bending this thing is going to be able to sustain. So the way to do that is I'm going to right click in fixtures and I say I want a fixed geometry. And I'm going to select this surface in here. And that surface of the flute is going to be fixed. So we'll see what all of that means in just a second. Also, if you zoom in in here, you see that when I change the material, it also starts showing some texture. So that's pretty cool uh, in here. And now I want to apply the force. So I right click here. I click on force. And I can say that I want the, I want the force to be applied on that surface. But I want the direction to be, um, oh, if I only had a line. Before I, let me go back here to the model. Uh, I want to do just a quick sketch in here. I want a vertical line, just like that. There we go. Because that line, I, I will be able to specify that the direction of the force is along that line so it's vertically downwards if i go back to the static in here and i go to external load I go back here to force then again i would again select that surface and i'll say that the direction is along that line and i want the direction to be downwards and i'll say that have you guys taken physics in high school by any chance already you guys know what uh, like newton is and it's a unit of, of force so you can approximate that Say I have like something that weighs one kilo uh, on the end of this thing. So one kilo would correspond to roughly 10 newtons. So I can say that I have a force. That it's as if I had a mass of one kilo uh, being sustained at the end of this flute. And I can say, OK. And now there's this thing that's called meshing, which means I'm going to divide this thing. It's 
it's I have like a like a continuous realm of, of the flute. But in order to compute all of these uh, computational simulations, I need to divide this flute into very tiny elements that I call uh, it's I lots of these elements. So the way you do it is by meshing. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna just let the software do that for us. So I'll right click there and I'll click mesh and run. Uh, so it does that, and I'll let's wait until it stops running. So it's so far so good. Let's see what the results look like in here. So let's let it think for a second. And all of the stuff that I'm doing right now, it's actually done by companies that design musical instruments. They are interested in knowing like whether it's gonna fail uh, or not. Um, but whenever I do these sort of simulations, uh, the software takes a little bit of time to, to think and, and display the results. Uh, but believe me, it's gonna be, it's gonna be worth it. So let's just wait until it stops. It's um, stop loading, and in the same way that we are doing now a simulation showing like this, like structural analysis, we can also do a simulation of me blowing through through the flute and trying to predict the sounds that the flute is gonna is gonna produce. And there, I'm quite literally designing a musical instrument. So you're now going into mechanical engineering meshed with acoustical engineering. I bet there's also some electrical engineering as well there. So we're talking about a field that is extremely multidisciplinary in perhaps an industry that one would have never imagined that there was so much engineering in, involved in there. Um, so let's let it think uh, for a second. In the meantime, if you guys have any questions, I can answer them. Right here. What are you doing with this software normally now for your day job? Oh, my day job? Uh, I, I can tell you also uh, about that too. I didn't. Yes, I'm. I'm currently right now in the in the good state of Texas, very far away. <laughs> so I consider myself a cowboy now. Um, and I'm working in a company that's called uh, Applied Materials, which you may or may have not heard about, and they. It's essentially a company that is on the semiconductors industry. A semiconductor is a device. It's a, it's a device like a chip. So this computer, the computer that you guys have right now in Philly, and the computer for which I'm talking right now, it has something that's a, a microchip. It's like a, it's essentially the the heart. It's what makes computers think, and it has millions and billions of these little tiny things called transistors, which are on and off switches. So essentially, the company I work at now, they design the machines that makes uh, these chips. And chips, maybe you heard it or not in the news, are a super important topic these days because a lot of different countries are interested in chips. It's also related to machine learning and artificial intelligence because the better the chips that you got, the the better the capabilities of your AI models that you can run. And, and of course, AI can be used for all sorts of applications, from medicine to engineering to science to even music in here. And so that's why people are interested in chips. And there's also a very large geopolitical uh, you know, conflict surrounding that. So at least on my front, uh, I work as a manufacturing engineer. So I supervise uh, the some a component, a sub-assembly of these machines uh, that gets bit properly. So I, if you played with Legos in the past, my job surrounds a lot about designing the building instructions for the Legos. I also work with the folks that follow these instructions, trying to improve them, gather feedback from them, uh, trying to make them better. I try to improve the manufacturing process, which is streamlining the way uh, these machines get built but trying to prevent defects uh, from a quality perspective as well. Um, I, I'm just I'm also learning a lot. Uh, I think it's very cool when you're in, a, in an actual uh, like factory, right? Because that's where I work. So downstairs is the office where I have the computer and upstairs is the, the factory area. Um, and, I just, and I go there maybe two, three times a day because we have to solve all sorts of problems. Um, and maybe what I learned in university is not quite uh, well, it is and it isn't applicable uh, to what I'm doing right now. But at the end of the day, uh, really, you, know, you learn on the job uh, a lot of things. Uh, but that's, I think, the beauty of engineering, right? That you are uh, fundamentally taught uh, how to solve problems of all sorts of varieties, right? And that is what makes it exciting. Well, it seems that this is taking a little bit you know, to load. So maybe I can 
to show you right now. Uh, if you go to YouTube and you type uh, getting started with SolidWorks and you also type my name, in the, well, I, my name of my channel is Annex, you see that I have a 12 video series. Uh, just uh, this, these videos, so previously at Penn, I was the teaching assistant for six semesters of the class that teaches uh, how to use this software. And if you follow these 12 videos, it mostly parallels uh, that same class. So you would be essentially taking uh, like a university level class. And I think it fairly well explains um, most of the different capabilities of this software. And if you look in here, uh, well, I have a, a bunch of videos about that. But if you go to playlists, I also have a series of videos related to another software that's called Fusion 360, which is very similar to the one that we're using today, which is called SolidWorks. So, so Fusion 360 is also it's free. That one is definitely free for students, um, and you can also watch. It's a smaller meeting series. It's just five videos that is in there. Um, and just to give you like a small snapshot of, of the sort of things uh, that you can design here. Uh, and a, another musical instrument <laughs> that I designed, which is actually one of my favorite ones. It's has, it's anybody has it, has anybody heard of the Erhu by any chance? The Erhu is a a two-string violin uh, from China, which is a very, very beautiful instrument. And, and in this video, that's what I designed. Uh, <laughs> it, it looks like that, uh, just using a, another software. Uh, I, I guess it, it wasn't my first time designing an instrument. I used to live in China but back in the day. Some other things that, I, that I've also designed, if you go back to my mini series in here are Oh, this one is a, another interesting one. I've designed like the fuselage of an airplane. So to give you just a little, a little bit of taste, right, of the different things that you're able to do with the exact same software. Uh, some other things is uh, I try to kind of replicate. Uh, I was trying to make like a motor in here. Uh, let's see if there. So I'm adding like the different pistons, right? Uh, so essentially, when you make it turn, like all of the pistons will move uh, up and down. Uh, well, I think this one is, I have another one where I design uh, like a bicycle and whatnot. Well, let's see in the meantime if this is done. Well, it seems that SolidWorks decided to not work right now. Uh, so I'll just say I'll wait in here until this is done. Um, so, I, so I can stop uh, sharing my screen for now. And, but any other questions that you guys find uh, about this or anything you like that? Yes. Uh, what is the like, coolest thing you made? Uh, could you say that again? What, is, what was the coolest thing that you made out of the software? Oh, the coolest thing that I've made. Uh, um, let's see. Um, oh, like, uh, do, uh, this one might take a while to, to open it here. Let me see if I can find uh, maybe one of my YouTube videos. I actually don't know. Uh, do you know what a Bionicle is by any chance? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you know? <laughs> that is, that is, oh, but I, I don't think it's gonna it's gonna open. But I designed uh, literally all of the pieces, but well, most of the pieces for a Bionicle. It's one of my projects. When I stay after work in here, I'm just working on that for fun. Um, yes, I'm wondering. Any, anything else? Uh, I have a question, but I'm off camera. Why don't you come yes. Up? Front so you can see. Um, sorry. I want to. Sorry. I want to actually here for you to like build something on this on this website on this software. Yeah, could, could you say that again? Sorry. Um, how long does it usually take for you to design something on the software? Uh -huh. Well, it depends on, on what specifically uh, you might be designing. Uh, the trumpet uh, took me four days, uh, but it was maybe like intervals of two days. But sometimes I stop um, and I, I, I like thinking a little bit about the strategy uh, that I'm going to pursue. Uh, maybe, maybe Kush can share the video that I made about the trumpet. <laughs> it's just that uh, it's not yet available uh, online. 
I, I have to wait a couple of months until I can make it available uh, for different reasons. Uh, but that one took me. I, I designed actually. Let me pull up uh, here in my channel. Let me share my screen again. Uh, there we go. In here we go to videos. Uh, you see this train? Uh, so this one, there's a class at Penn uh, that allows you. Oh, why? Well, I, I don't know. Want to see that one? <laughs> there we go. You see that train in there? I also designed it using this software, and you can see it. Not only that, but it also moves like that. It, it, it's nice, right? It's like a little. There's, there's a class at Penn that it's all about manufacturing, and they show you, you know, how to design a little. You know, they, all sorts of things. And for the final project, we did. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that, that 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 is me, I think. And then you can see like some pictures of how to, that that one took a long time to make. Uh, yeah, that, that that was our team and there. Many, many. Oh, I'm wearing actually the same T-shirt in that picture. Uh, all right now, look at that. That is funny. And let's see if I have uh, another one. Let's see some other cool things. Oh, I did this bicycle here. Uh... Qu any questions? We have one last question. Well, yes. About anything you made with it, like on you right now. Oh, oh I have it right now. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Let me stop. Uh... Oh, let me... here's the coolest one. I got here. Like this, this thing. Uh, so this thing was meant to be like a like a stand uh, to sustain. Uh, it, it's like an adaptable diameter. And so there's like a big cylinder piece that we have here at the factory, and they wanted something that could sustain the weight of that. But there's cylinders with different diameters. So what I thought about designing this is like by moving these pegs like up and down, uh, you are able to modify a little bit the diameter. So if you take a closer look, actually I think. There's like a little device that is used for fingers. Maybe it's also for music, right? That it's it's inspired on that. You see, it has like a system of like some, I think, it's like springs in there, like a steel rod, and it has like a like a pretty design. Uh, I'm wondering whether I have a, something else too, and that's all 3D printed. Uh, I have also, you know, like like a fixture tool in here. No, nothing too fancy, just for one of the machines. Um, and that's as much as I can show you at the moment, because uh, my, my boss does walk around uh, this hallway very often, and they will, I will get in trouble <laughs> if I show you more. Uh, yeah, that, that, is a, that, that is it. Well, uh, Andy, thank you so much. We're going to have to Franklin Field next. So. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I hope you didn't get bored. Uh, and if you want to chat with me afterwards, uh, feel free to reach out to Kush and he can give you my contact. I'll try to, I promise I'll get you those links afterwards. Um, and you, I hope you have a wonderful time at the camp. Um, I wish I could be there playing my euphonium. Uh, if not, play hard, enjoy, and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you.